you have been in Ukraine since the beginning, right? Yes. So, yes. Lucky bastard. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> Experience. Privet, privet from Kiev, and welcome to another episode of the Valka Valka. So I'm here with a guest today, uh, Lloyd, who just flew into Kiev from South Africa. Quite a long trip, so he left, uh, locked down uh, Cape Town, because this is 2021. Yeah, towards the end of March when I'm filming this, and yeah, a lot of the world is in lockdown. And we just had some restrictions here, new restrictions in Kiev, but we're going to dive into why they're kind of a little bit in, in co coincidental compared to many other parts of the world. So, Lloyd, welcome. Lloyd Thank and I, much. first of all, we know each other because you have an online project that you interviewed me for in Lviv two years ago. And That's then crazy. he actually wrote me there a few days ago, say, hey, I'm in Kiev and I happen to be here. So we actually <laughs> hung out and we're going to let you know today the difference between being We'll call South Africa the West, although it's a little bit extreme in terms of the lockdowns there compared to obviously it's Africa, but uh, it's where... I think where we can put it under the same, under the same bracket. Yeah, yeah, for this we just certainly can. And here in Eastern Europe, because we're also going to you know, speak a little bit about where he's going next, which is Belarus, but we're going to deal primarily with Ukraine. Uh, so, Lloyd, tell me what was it like in South Africa when you left? Well, hello everybody. First, it's great to be back and see you again, Connor, after a couple of years. Um, in South Africa, it was, it's been very strange. So when I left Cape Town, you've been there before. Yeah, I've before, been to Cape Town. Beautiful place, up. beautiful city. But um, as with the rest of the world, it's gone a bit crazy with lockdown and all of this stuff. It, it is a little bit more open at the moment, at least it was when I left, compared to the UK, which is basically under total lockdown but um yeah when i it's it's kind of been going been a bit of a game of cat and mouse so going to lockdown then out of it and alcohol bans we can get into that in a moment as well and bring back the alcohol and it was kind of not too bad when i left but i thought you know rather get out while i can <laughs> escape before, yeah <laughs> bef before while things are kind of calm and it was actually on the green list so that was on the green list somehow even though most of the rest of the world is very scared of South Africa and the variants and everything. But for some reason, Ukraine thought, no, you're OK. So, I so the green a... list to explain is when you come here to Ukraine at the moment, uh, you are required to do a coronavirus test before you arrive or upon arrival, unless your country is in the green list. So that's basically a metric they use to say that the incidence of coronavirus is less than here in Ukraine currently and South Africa it is despite the fact it's all locked down they have all these restrictive draconian measures yeah. there or maybe because of it and uh, that's actually really great so that meant you had no restrictions when you came here you just had yeah. to buy some special insurance um, and it was super cheap it was yeah, like, how much did you spend on it? Jeez, oh, like maybe 25 30 dollars for, for a month okay for a month. I can't remember exactly but it's something like a couple of bucks a day or something I yeah. can't remember it's, it's really cheap Oh, and it's like the first few, the first day is like a couple of bucks, and then it's like thirty cents a day after that. So it's, okay, it's so really cheap. It's and basically a trivial cost. Basically and you can easily, in. you can easily get it on the uh, on the Ukrainian tourist website as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so I was in South Africa. So tell us, why did you feel like you had to escape uh, <laughs> South Africa? South Africa is a beautiful place. I've beautiful been place. there. It's beautiful place. And uh, yeah, you have Cape Town. It's a spectacular city with Table Mountain and uh, the sea, the ocean. There, it's pretty amazing. But you felt you needed to escape to Eastern Europe. Tell us why. <laughs> Sounds like a bit of a bit of a strange one, but yeah, I mean, I love South Africa. I uh, love Cape Town. I've got family in South Africa. It's actually why I went back there in the first place. It was just before lockdown. I went to be there for the birth of my niece. My sister's uh, sister had a baby, and I thought, you know, I'll stick around for a few months, and then yeah. I'll go traveling again, which I like to do. I work online, and I always like to move around. And so stick around for a few months and then I was going to leave in around March. And then, well, I think we know what happened in March, <laughs> March 2020. The, exactly, March and 2020, everything started to, sh uh, to shut down yeah. uh, across the world. And uh, maybe just briefly tell us what were the worst things about being in a, in a country that has a severe lockdown? Well, uh, you might have some viewers in South Africa, I'm not sure. But for those who don't know, South Africa at the beginning had basically the strictest lockdown in the world. So the president said, you have to stay at home 24 hours a day, 
for the next 21 days, which was then extended for. So it was about a couple of months, basically, you had to stay at home. You couldn't even go outside for a walk legally. Um, it was pretty crazy. That's, that's basically house arrest, effective house arrest. House, house arrest. And then they started to ease it a little bit. <clears throat> so they, could, they said between six and nine in the morning, you were allowed to go for a walk, you're allowed to exercise. But apart from that, no. And then what happens? Everybody goes outside between six and nine, so it's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's not very effective for keeping people apart because they all go at the same time. And then alcohol, that was another thing that got banned. You also yes. cigarettes. Yes, uh, alcohol was banned, completely banned. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I know both. <laughs> I, I enjoy a beer as much as the next guy, so stocked up before that. But then uh, the alcohol ban went on for several months. Then they brought it back, and then they took it away again. Uh, for several months and then they brought it back and then took it so it's been this whole nightmare of yeah all you don't know that. what's what's going to be the next restriction you, you, you kind of live in you live in this kind of um continuous uh uncertainty you know and that's one of the reasons i decided to to get out now because things are well i haven't checked the latest numbers but they were fairly stable fairly calm yeah. um last week but you know how it can suddenly jump up so i was thinking now's a good time to get out Another thing as well is that international travel was completely banned uh, oh, for, wow. most, for most of last year from South Africa. So even if I wanted to leave, I, I wouldn't have been yeah. able to. That's been something that some of my clients have been facing most recently because uh, their countries, uh, they want to come here and live this our experience with me and they've already paid deposit, some of them, but they're actually just not legally allowed to leave for non-essential reasons. So they're basically trapped in their countries. They're, they, they can't leave, but they're not under as severe uh, restrictions as kind of effective house detention, yeah. house arrest, although like you be, were in South Africa. Yeah. So, to be fair with South Africa, it has, at the moment, I get these things change all the time, but when I left, it was better than probably the UK and uh, maybe United States, but again, it might get worse yeah. again soon. So. The, these, regular, these restrictions have been going up and down. So, that's the situation in South Africa. You decide to book a ticket here and get out uh, of the country while you still had a chance to escape. And uh, you didn't face much of hassle coming here to Ukraine. You just um, had to buy the special insurance online. That's pretty easy to do. And uh, then you came in. You, but you know, of course, if you have been coming from a country that was on the red zone or in the red zone that the Ukrainian government used uh, when they used these metrics, then you would have had to have obviously the coronavirus test and what, whatnot. But still, you know, it's relatively easy. There's no self-isolation once you have a negative test and you'll be free to go. So tell me the contrast when you got here to Ukraine after South Africa? Well, I mean, there's a couple of things. <clears throat> One is that, uh, you know, it's much more relaxed in terms of, you know, walking around. Oh, one thing I didn't mention is that in South Africa, as of a few months ago, if you are not wearing a mask in public, uh, you can be sent to prison for up to six months. Okay, that's what the law says. Will people actually get sent to prison for... I don't know if it's actually followed yeah. through with, but you, you live under that kind of fear yeah. of thinking, you know... Should uh, I risk going out with I, a mask? Should I risk going out with a, out a mask? And it's, Obviously, it's, that's not the case in Ukraine. As no. you can see, we're not risking imprisonment <laughs> to stand no. here on the street and yeah. film without masks on, so there's nothing like that. Um, so that was the first thing. You, you felt a sense of, like, relief getting here yeah. to Eastern Europe? and also, I mean, like, of course people are wearing masks and stuff here, you know, going into different establishments but it is more relaxed is you know I've I've had several instances in South Africa where you just you you're made to feel very uncomfortable you know and it's like just some ridiculous situations I think I told you the other day I was at a restaurant because the whole thing is you're outside in the in the fresh air like no one yeah. around and you've got to wear a mask then yeah. you go into a, you know maybe a restaurant you sit down you can take off the mask it doesn't make any <laughs> sense and then so I was in a restaurant a few months ago just by myself um, no one else around me. I wanted to walk to another table. I was, I was going outside. There was literally no one within 10 <laughs> meters of me. I walked to the other table without my mask on. And oh. then... Um, criminal. Criminal, yeah. And then uh, one of the managers came over to me and like basically scolded me. It's like, don't do that again. Like we saw you walk. It's like, it feels like you're living in kind of 1984 kind of yeah. thing. And it's, it's crazy how it's happened so quickly. So just getting out of that kind of environment um and being here just feel feeling much more free obviously not really related to covid but uh south africa is not always the safest country i mean i'm, I'm someone who likes to walk around and you know night night time any time of day and you, you can kind of do this like cape town's a bit safer but you're still kind of always looking over your shoulder and uh here that's something you don't have to do i mean i feel very safe here and it's just it is 
very liberating to, to, to feel like that. So the liberating things, obviously with the special COVID situation, there are some unique ones. So you don't, you know, the attitude here is a lot more laissez-faire. So Ukraine doesn't have a strong tradition of rule of law. So even if a law is passing, you have to do something, it probably won't be enforced 100%. And people, you know, do give you a lot more leeway in respect to rules. So that's one thing. And then just in general, the fact that uh, security, personal security here is not an issue. Uh, despite maybe what some people in the West will say, think, because there's kind of always this stereotype of Russians or Ukrainians. Obviously, we're here in Ukraine or Belarusians, people from the former Soviet Union being rough and aggressive and, you know, it's dangerous here. Uh, not since the 90s, maybe in the early 90s, there was an issue with like uh, hooliganism. Uh, but now it's very, very safe to walk around city centers uh, for sure in Ukraine, also in Belarus. And in my experience, on the whole in Russia, maybe not quite the safe in Russia, but uh, when I compare that to many parts of the West, like if when I go to the UK, Oh, that's, that's a, that's a dodgy area. <laughs> I face so many more issues of personal security than I do here in Eastern Europe uh, in general, I have to especially say. In, when, especially in somewhere like London. There's yeah. some places you don't really want to walk around. But just even in the, just overall, I, I think that there's a lot more violence when people are drunk. Yeah. In the UK in particular, and also Ireland where I grew up, um, people, they tend to overdrink. They be, a certain number of guys or girls, it's so increased to become also women become aggressive yeah. and violent. Um, normally they target other women. But uh, yeah, I remember there's a, a funny time where I used to be a race car driver when I was younger and we had a, a big burly uh, mechanic you've from had, you've had several careers by the way yes Very impressive. <laughs> so <laughs> this is race, something that race car driver was a new one for me. <laughs> uh, but I had this big burly mechanic from Northern Ireland he's from a rough uh, Protestant estate where there were a lot you know this is back in the day so there was an issue with uh, terrorism and violence right now thankfully we don't have any more but he came from those kind of areas I remember I went there once with him but I remember we were in Wales. We went to have a race in Wales in Swansea. So after the race, we were out drinking uh, in Swansea, which is a city in, in Wales. And uh, I remember this girl was so aggressive that he actually stood out of the way of her because he was worried that she might be. And this is a tall, big bouncer type guy, right? He was worried. Obviously, it's not like she would beat him up or something, but he was worried about that she might like be, do something to him and just prov provoke a situation. That was the level of aggressive uh, uh, of hostility at times and aggressiveness from some of the women in the UK. So that is something that you don't see in the big cities here in Ukraine. Now, obviously, if you go to a small town, it's going to be a little bit different. You're going to have people who are drunk and maybe a little bit more aggressive and but violent. Yeah, but, but I mean, if you come to Ukraine, you're probably not heading there. No, no, no. So for your purposes, you're going to be probably in Kiev or Kharkiv or Odessa or Lviv or Moscow or wherever, Minsk. And uh, you're just not going to face that. And it's super safe in the city center. So that's one huge, yeah. huge advantage, not just from South Africa, where obviously it's a special situation. But I would say even compared to the United Kingdom and the U.S. then, you know, have a different say, set of I say, risks. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've traveled to a lot of countries around the world and um, I would say uh, Ukraine, Belarus, I mean maybe Belarus is a little bit different now with the political situation, two of the safest places, that I, two of the places I felt safer than anywhere else I would say. Yeah, and by and large. Of, that's out of a lot of, a lot of places. Yeah, I would say by and large compared to big cities in Western Europe or North America and definitely South America, mm. uh, uh, Asia. Asia is normally pretty safe everywhere. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I'm actually kind of forgetting. Yeah, yeah. yeah South Korea was very, yeah, it's very yeah. safe. But apart from that, Japan as well. But it's in yeah. the, it's in the similar. similar yeah, it's area. A, it basically. Uh, I mean, I've been living and traveling in this region for what about 12, 13 years. I could count on one hand any instance I had at all. Um, and and in our, if I go to the UK for three weeks, I'm probably going to have more problems. Oh, so you're, you're running around with a camera, so you're putting yourself maybe more front yeah. and center. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, but anyways, overall, super safe compared to where you've come from. Uh, maybe describe also um, some more of the advantages. Obviously, maybe not just compared to South Africa, but maybe on a worldwide level. Obviously, how have things gone with what I know you want to know about the dating here? since you've come to wow. uh come to ukraine uh well a gentleman doesn't kiss and tell but <laughs> <laughs> um i mean in terms of not only that but the the nightlife the yeah. the activities i mean we're in you know in, in kiev you just so many nice restaurants uh cocktail bars i know you you enjoy the clubs as well and just 
so many, so many to choose from. Every every street there, it seems like there's another lovely, nice. I, I like the cocktail bars myself, and that's and, one uh, of the things in Kiev um, that's really special. I think the cocktail bars are something that sets it apart from the other cities in the region. There's just a huge number of them, a variety of yeah. them. Very cool places, a lot of speakeasies, and there's a great vibe. You can kind of go bar hopping here in the center, and, uh, and very, very, very sophisticated as well. Yeah. Like they, they really, I think they would they would be on, on a par with almost anywhere in the world, I would say. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So level is very high. Also the clientele in terms of obviously the looks of the girls, also very high. I think you'd agree with that. I, I would definitely agree with that. Yes, <laughs> especially compared to your whale story. Yeah, no, no, whales, uh, swans, Excuse you know. the pun, maybe, the whale. <laughs> well, we're not going to just pick on whales, no. but uh, yeah, definitely compared to a night out in Swansea, that's uh, very different. Less aggressivity, uh, aggressiveness, uh, a lot more beautiful chicks. Yeah. And then how have you found with meeting them? Because a lot of guys have asked me, oh, there's no partying, no clubbing. Uh, should I still come? Uh, how do things work? How have you found it? Well, I would say that, um, I mean, you talk about this a lot in your channel. Um, when you come as a, as a foreign guy, it does give you extra, extra value. It, it sets you apart. It gives you at least a bit of a head start, I would say. And, and, and also something I've been impressed with uh, is, because I haven't really spent that much time in Kiev before, um, but the, obviously it's, it's, it's not quite the same as maybe Western Europe or something, but the level of English uh, with many girls is actually pretty decent obviously there's some girls who don't it seems like there's two there's two opposites like either the girls cannot speak a lick of English or pretty good there doesn't yeah. seem to be any there's a bit more of a dichotomy today I think than maybe five years ago where there's probably a certain percentage of girls who uh, speak possible English for sure and then they tend to obviously be a little bit English groupy like and mm. um, that's going to be your main focus obviously if you come here and you're coming for a short trip like learning a language is obviously a big ask. Uh, it's not going to be worth your investment. Obviously, if you're living here, that's a very different story. So I always present it like, okay, if you come and you rely on English, you're going to have access basically to a certain type of girl and you're going to face a certain set of obstacles. Like there's a lot of sex tourism here. A lot of girls aren't super interested in tourists. You need to make sure that you're not put into that box of being just another tourist because uh, girls here, it's not the 1990s where a foreign guy is some sort of rare bird that they will see there. Even with COVID, um, obviously reducing the amount of guys coming here, which makes it one of the best times to be well, here. Probably, I was, just, I was just about to say that you're probably gonna, you know, you will have a little bit less competition in that department because not many people are, are coming here tourist right, tourist wise compared to uh, to usual. So yeah, definitely. That's something I also noticed when I had a client over and we went to Kharkiv, which um, doesn't receive as many tourists in general as Kiev, and at the moment it basically receives none. Uh, and then the reaction was super, super mm. open. I would think it was almost like in, in Belarus. Just a final thing on what's open and uh, what you can do when you come. Um, we went out, they actually re introduced some uh, restrictions yesterday in Kiev, which got a lot of fanfare across the world because they, they say it's locked down. Um, before they introduced that, what, what was, everything was open basically. <laughs> yeah, so, I, so I, I got here about a week ago mm. and um, the new kind of lockdown measures, although they're still kind of, yeah, I mean, We'll talk about that maybe in a moment, but it's been a good week. It's been yeah. a, fun, a very fun week, especially coming, you know, coming from that, you know, more restrictive lifestyle. And another thing as well is not having any curfew, so you can go, you know, go home whatever time you want. Yeah. And uh, uh, the bars that I've been to, because they have a kind of a, uh, they're supposed to stop serving, I guess, like midnight. They, 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 they may continue <laughs> after that. They may continue 4 after that. 4 a.m. is the new midnight. Yeah, and they'll just basically like lock the door and mm. uh, you can carry on until whatever time. So that was before they introduced these new measures. Um, what's the situation afterwards? What do we do over the weekend? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the new lockdown was officially supposed to start at, I think it was like midnight and Saturday night. But it was Friday we, night. Friday night's uh, midnight. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Friday night, Saturday morning. But, you know, we, we basically got into this place just before midnight, I think very nice bar um, i'm sure you can take your clients there very nice one um i don't want to mention the name because yes we don't want to get people in trouble so yeah. we're not going to mention Pro the names of places pr protect the innocent <laughs> protect the innocent but it was it was pumping it was it was yeah it was you would never know that anything was happening and it just continued until you know things generally continue until and i've spoken to some managers at some other bars and just asked them you know are you gonna uh, stay open uh, during the lockdown. They're like, yeah, we'll stay open. Yeah. They just, you just, um, 
and that's why someone like Connor would be very helpful because he knows, you know, loopholes and he knows the people, he knows the places, so he'll be able to help, to show you where to go and maybe the passwords as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Some of the places, uh, if they don't know you, they're less likely to let yeah, you in, basically. Yeah. I think that's kind of the rule of thumb. Yeah. You have to know what's going on or at least be able to talk to uh, the door staff and get yeah. yourself into all of these places. They're, they're, they're a little bit more wary yeah. than normal. So my rule of thumb is if you can't get in, uh, early so that you can just stay there you might not be able to roam as much yeah. or you're with someone uh, or, or you're willing to try and risk that yourself that you won't get in but yeah. basically then if you're going later on in the evening you you need to know where to go and where the party is like last night was actually the birthday party of a big club here in <laughs> in Kiev so and uh, it was a phenomenal phenomenal party so this whole idea that there's and that was, a lot and that, of, and that, that was uh, on the first day of the new the, lockdown well, yeah. so. so basically <laughs> Uh, the, the nightlife is as good as ever. You just need to be in the know and need to know how to get in. There are also some groups on social media uh, that are not open to the public that uh, I'm on that then basically give you access yeah. to this as well. Uh, obviously, I won't. I can't put this out in public where they are, but, but if you're here in Kiev and you're in the know, you, you can get access to those. So basically, there's also here, a lot of sorry, interrupt, sorry yeah. interrupt, but there's a lot of outdoor places as well. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the restaurants and bars they're, they're still open. They're just doing you know outdoor service. It's a bit chilly, of course. It's going to hopefully warm up soon. Like there's these nice. I like these um, kind of uh, wine, warm wine yeah. places. There's quite a lot of those dotted along the main street, and. Um, yeah, there's a lot of lot of activity there, a lot of people, and I'm sure you can still have a good time there as you as you work out which uh, which uh, secret bar to go to <laughs> exactly. later on. Um, and maybe you could talk to people as well while you're there, get some advice. Like, hey, where do you know any any yeah. secret places? Because I found when I, when you just go and talk to people, um, pretty receptive and pretty friendly, pretty open to to. Uh, Helping you out. In that exactly. Uh, partners in crime, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here it is. So right now, because they've introduced these new measures, again, it's late March. They have a three-week um, restrictions here in Kiev. So it's done on a, a city-wide basis, an oblast uh, uh, basis. Uh, basically, we were not allowed to sit inside in the restaurants as we were previous to uh, Friday. And that's going to be for three weeks here in Kiev. There are actually places that you can go in. Again, you need to know that they're there. They will not be visible from outside. So again, you know, this kind of you need to be able to take those shortcuts. But you can actually sit inside in a lot of restaurants. Again, you need to know where they are. Uh, and there are other cities where everything is 100% open. So actually, what I'm going to do tomorrow, uh, I'm going to go to Dnipro, I think, and I'm going to film a vlog there for you. So that will be coming up pretty soon. But everything is open to Dnipro and uh, Kharkiv as well. And Kharkiv is actually where I've been going with clients. I think it's probably the best spot almost uh, in well, most of Europe are right now to party and stuff like that. So um, not really that much of an inconvenience in any and, case. And, you know, uh, I mean, who knows, but it, I, it feels as though after those three weeks of, are up, it will be back to yeah. back to normal. And the again. weather will be warmer. And, and the weather, Yeah, so the weather so. will be getting warmer and I think things will just... Because they're putting up quite a few um, ter terraces and covering for them now. I actually saw them do, construct them yesterday beside my apartment at the cafe I go to. So I guess... Probably by tomorrow they have all the seating there. You can sit outside there. It's a little bit nippy uh, right now because this has been a particularly cold winter in Ukraine. Last year we had a very mild one, but uh, this year has been a bit colder. So that's basically the situation. Now, in general, because obviously we've dealt with the whole COVID, and basically you can you can come to Ukraine and uh, you know the extra he steps that you need to go through, like the, the insurance and maybe having the coronavirus test I mean, the, if you're coming the, the, from the country. Thing, like, mm. uh, and and, and uh, obviously your, your viewers will be from different countries and different... Go and go, I do, do recommend you go and check out the... I think it's the Visit Ukraine website or something. Just type in Ukraine COVID entry on Google, you'll, uh, you'll get it. And on the website, you can just type in your country and it will show you if you're in the red or the green, and then it will show you what restrictions there are. So green, basically, there's no restrictions, yep. no COVID test, yep. which, is, which is crazy. There's almost no country that has <laughs> that. Um, no quarantine. The only thing you need is the insurance. It takes like a couple of minutes to, to buy that on. on they've yeah. got that directly on the website. There's like a couple of Ukrainian countries. Just choose one of them. They're all the same. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. and it's, yeah. And then it's pretty straightforward. And you just show it. I, I just When I came through the immigration, that's the only thing I needed to show, just that I just showed him. And I was I was prepared. I had all the, you know, the screenshots ready of the green zone thing. Mm -hmm. And he just, he didn't care. He's like, he's like, yeah, just go through. <laughs> <laughs> so basically relatively Obviously, you, don't, you know, you can't bank on that. But uh, yeah. it kind of shows that in Ukraine, 
more relaxed kind of yeah atmosphere. definitely more relaxed atmosphere in general and i think that's an overall thing so stepping aside from the COVID situation um what i know you're going to go to belarus uh, that's your plan at the moment where everything is also open well, but might, i'm thinking i might delay that a little bit because i'm just having a great time here i mean it's just <laughs> <laughs> why leave a good place to yeah, take risks? yeah no it's just um it's uh, i i i've been to kiev before just for like a short trip but and i would recommend as well for people who come here stay as close to the center as you can when i was here before i was at an airbnb nice airbnb but it was like 20 30 minutes out the city outside the city by the metro and when you're down here in the center i know you're staying in the center as well it's just you can walk everywhere you don't need to take an uber you don't need to take the metro i haven't, be, haven't even been in the metro once this time yeah. and everything's within walking distance very walkable if you stay within right in the, the center. center same the as center Le- is same, big here. same as Lviv as well very yeah. walkable and and and, Odessa. and i love that uh, yeah i haven't <laughs> so been to Odessa yet, but i i take your word for it so belarus just to talk about the other country in the region now normally i'm of course a big advocate of belarus uh, as a place but uh they have at the moment you have to stay a minimum 11 days and you need to even with a negative coronavirus test you were supposed to self-isolate for 10 days and they did make a big deal and fine a big group of foreigners who did not respect that <laughs> last month. So basically, that's going to be a bit tricky uh, yeah. to go to Belarus. Like, obviously, if you've got a month, because we have 30 days visa-free, most of us, when we fly in and out of the airport, but not via Russia. Just so you're aware of that, you don't get caught up by that little oddity in the Belarusian visa-free. Uh, so if you're going to stay 30 days, then you, maybe you want to go through that 10 days. But you're already here in Ukraine, so do you really want to sit at home for 10 days in Belarus to have yeah. 21 to yeah. have 20 days there afterwards when you can just spend 90 days visa-free I in, mean, in, in, in Ukraine? In my case, I do have some very close friends in Belarus and some business kind of business ties as well, which could maybe help, help me in some way with mm-hmm. quarantine. We'll see about that. But um, yeah, uh, I love Belarus, but but uh, if you're just trying to choose between the two i would definitely say ukraine is the option right now yeah that's Ki- the uh, kiev I, I think would be a great option as well yeah kiev obviously is a little bit too early for odessa and the summer parties down there uh kharkiv is like great <laughs> they don't right now as i'm speaking when i make this video they don't even have any uh additional restrictions so that's just fully open again when I say not additional restrictions, when I went there with my client, I've actually been back for one other weekend. It's kind of a little bit like here because technically anyways, you're not supposed to have places open after 10. Uh, so what's going to happen is that we're going to have to uh, go a bit earlier to make sure we get in, or we can go and talk to the bouncers. And obviously, if you know someone, you can, we can fig- get you in. You'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, well, but I- actually, you won't figure it out, I think, if you go as a foreigner not speaking any Russian, no, no, just no. to Kharkov. No, no, no. I, mean, I, mean, um, I, mean, I mean, you'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so you definitely need to have the insider knowledge a bit to deal with that. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely pumping. So I think, and you have diversity uh, in terms of you can go to, um, yeah, Kiev, Kharkiv right now are the two best. And uh, maybe Dnipro is also going to be very good, but I need to go there this weekend. Verify yeah, that. Yeah, uh, look, look also, you have Lviv about. for a different type of style as always in the in the west of Ukraine. And if you like the least seaside, Odessa. But I think it's too early. I don't think you should go to Odessa until May. Yeah. Uh, May, it starts end of May probably. It's a bit of a chilly winter here. So overall, what would you say are the... Um, best things about a move to Eastern Europe because you're going to spend a few months here. That's yeah. the whole idea. I, you know, uh, it's not just fly in for one week. Yeah. It's actually spend some time in the region. You might go to Belarus, uh, Russia. At the moment, you need a visa to get in. They're not issuing visas. If you need yeah, a I visa, mean, so Russia, it's a bit... Russia is totally off, off yeah. limits at the yeah. moment. Yeah. I'd say exactly. So hopefully that changes. I'm supposed to go there in June. A white nights. St. Petersburg. I'll link actually my uh, vlog from there when I went two years ago. We weren't able to go last year because of Rus- Russia not really issuing any visas for the entire year. Um, so here, what would you say are the three best things for you having decided to leave South Africa and come to Eastern Europe, in particular Ukraine? Three best things that are already after a week. Well, it's kind of crazy. Now I've been here for a week and it's uh, quite a lot's happened in that week and I'm thinking if I was in Belarus, for example, I would still be in quarantine now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Mm, yeah. <laughs> so the lack of quarantine, again, like it depends on your country. But you can avoid the quarantine if you get the test. Yeah. So the quarantine, so. as long as you get... And even if you don't take the test, they have facilities right next to the immigration area at the airport. So you can actually just get the test done there. Yeah. It's going to slow you down a bit. Rather get it done before if you do need the test. But you don't need the quarantine. Basically, you can avoid the quarantine by having a negative test. If you get it on arrival, you do have uh, 24 hours, at least last time I checked, Mm. to actually activate the app. 
Uh, so actually, you should have your results before then, and then that can yeah. help you avoid obviously having to lock down. But or if you're asleep during that period, then it's fine. But it does seem like the green list is pretty long. So mm -hmm. check it out. They update it, I think, every Friday. So just go into the onto the website, check it out, and if you're on the green list, definitely come. If, even if you're on the red list, I think you can still. Have, I mean, it's it's I mean, just a matter of getting the test. Yeah, so as long as you're willing to get the test, and so so three biggest things. And that, I think normally that list is updated about twice a week in my okay. experience. Yeah. Three of these things. Um, I would say the relaxed atmosphere is a big, a big thing, especially just coming from. And I'm sure a lot of your viewers are in countries where it's very restrictive and just a very kind of um, almost like a dystopian atmosphere. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? Obviously, I speak with my clients, also consulting clients, and it's actually a little bit hard for me to relate to the situation yeah. because I've been here yeah. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we did have a little bit of restrictions, obviously, uh, but in general things are pretty relaxed here, and you know Eastern Europe in general. Yeah. So it's just hard for yeah, me you, to imagine you, the you, lockdown you, you, for you, a year. You have been in Ukraine since the beginning, right? Yes. So, yes. Lucky bastard. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's hard for you to write. I mean, you've seen videos and stuff, but if you haven't lived in that yeah. feeling, that atmosphere, just it just feels so free to get out of that, and. Um, most of the world is is in that kind of situation. I'd say Ukraine is obviously, you know, the, it's not completely normal, but it's a heck of a lot more normal than than what I've experienced the last year. I can't yeah. it's been a year. It's crazy. So that's one. Relaxed. Um, nightlife is incredible, and I'm sure it's going to continue to be incredible even with yeah. the, this like mini lockdown, I guess you could call it. And I think the third one, well. Do I need to ask? We got to the third point. I don't think we need to mention the third one. I think if you're if you're a fan of Cotter's channel, I think the third one is pretty obvious. I think. Yes. Yeah. Do we need to say it? Um, <laughs> Just to be clear, yeah. someone someone out there is probably like, so it's the okay. food, right? It's an, the, the food is also great, anyways. But well, uh, it's, it's something it's something yummy. <laughs> So obviously uh, the chicks, they're still here. They actually can't travel as much either. So Ukrainians are obviously to a certain extent trapped. It's interesting over the winter, Bukovel, the main ski resort, was absolutely jammed. Yeah. Absolutely jammed. Every time I looked on Instagram, jammed. It was probably one of their best winters <laughs> for people because the Ukrainians couldn't fly away and they don't get that many foreigners coming. That is something for, for next season. Obviously ski season is now over. But I'd just like to add, sorry to interrupt, I just yeah. want to add more, one more thing as well. You've mentioned it before, but it's important is you need to come here for longer than a week yeah um what i found is that you get asked quite a lot how long are you here i'm not talking about immigration officers out of uniform immigration <laughs> officers they're interrogating you. yeah i joke sometimes like, you sound like an immigration <laughs> officer but um i would say stay here and the amazing this might be number four mm -hmm. but uh you depending on which country you come from. And I think it's a long list of countries. You can stay here for, in your case, you can stay here, like indefinitely, because you <laughs> found some loophole. But you can stay, <laughs> I don't, yeah. You can contact me if you want to know about yeah. these kind of loopholes, uh, my consulting, yeah. I'll put a link to my consulting below. But even without any loopholes, you can stay here, unless I'm mistaken, it's 90 days out of 180. Yeah, so three months every six. Which is incredible. Yeah. Um, without any visa, no paperwork, nothing. You just walk through, you've got 90 days so that you can come and go. And as long as it's 90 days within 180 and then after that, come back again for another. Yeah. It's incredible. I mean, there's not many countries where you can get all yeah. of that with that deal. Belarus, they have uh, recently in the last couple of years, and they've now got a month, which is pretty, that was only five days before. Yeah. A month was pretty good, 10 days in quarantine. Yeah, so you, <laughs> I mean, not it's, so not, good. it's not really a competition in that respect. Um, so that's huge. And since we've mentioned, uh, if you are looking, you know, to date a uh, local lady, they are going to be asking questions, you know, are you a tourist? Uh, uh, are you here for business? Are you, how long are you here? So if you're at least here for a few it, weeks, a few at weeks, at least that shows that you're more serious and that I think they would be more interested and more open. Yeah, I think that's particularly true for Ukraine. I don't think that's the case for Belarus so yeah. much, but here for sure, you want to be taken out of that tourist well, Belarus box. Belarus, you can't be. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for sure, and if you can spend a few months. Now, if you are uh, a, a kind of guy who wants to actually come for longer than three months and not have the hassle of coming in and out uh, and spending three months somewhere else, which a lot of the participants on my recent, the one I'm running at the moment, running season two of 
uh, Slavic Utopia Secrets Ukraine, which is for guys who want to spend three to 12 months here in Ukraine per year, maybe invest in real estate. And obviously for those guys, uh, if you're one of them, you need a solution to have an optimal visa solution. So you want to sell it in three months. So basically you're going to need to get temporary or permanent residency in the beginning. Uh, if you're interested in that, um, well, you can look down below. I have on demand, I guess, at this stage, the, the actual program. Uh, I'll put a link to that. But if you're also interested in just getting cutting to the chase and actually just getting that solved, you can uh, contact me and send me an email at connorkline at experience.com. You can also just uh, look directly on my consulting option. And I have all those programs below also in the description. Just click on that and then we can set up the call and we can discuss that. It can also be which country in the region. That's one of the biggest things I'm getting. I'm actually going to make a video maybe the next maybe two or three videos time about which country is the best in the region russia ukraine or belarus for you in particular because that is a question i get an awful lot and obviously the visa regimes play a part in that uh, along with other things so uh, definitely if you want to spend longer than three months you need a solution to that you can't be depending if for some reason they shut the borders which i don't think will happen but if it did actually you can still come in if you're a resident that's actually one of my, one of my clients got residency here he actually didn't want to spend more than three months at a time but he just didn't want to have the hassle of maybe yeah. um, being locked out of the country because if you have residency you can come in in any case that's what happened last august so i think overall that's enough compelling reasons to leave whether it happens to be south africa or somewhere else in the west or somewhere else in the world that is in a constant state of flux about lockdowns and just in general the relaxed atmosphere that's also pre-lockdown COVID situation. That's been one of the strong things here. Uh, obviously, if you watch my channel and you watch a lot of videos, you know the girls are hotter here in general than in other countries. And the dating option is great as long as you know what you're doing. I got a little bit of experience. Should be good on that one. And then, of course, the cost of living is also a fraction of, say, being in yeah. you know, London or somewhere yeah. like that. It's also you, a big I mean, thing. I've mentioned this already, but the, the, the restaurants, the bars, you can get some really, really classy places at a fraction of the price yeah. compared to somewhere in the west so yep. you're getting and I, I'm someone I'm sure you are as well like anybody who likes value for money yeah. good value that's and, the key um, point too. that's pretty a pretty good deal and the relaxed atmosphere as you said they're the three strong things that attract me to living in the region and in particular Ukraine and in particular spending more time here than just coming as a tourist a couple of weeks because actually with the dating as uh, Lloyd pointed out uh, it's a bit of an issue if you only come for a week I don't think this country is actually the best place for dating for sure if you're only coming on a, on a short trip it becomes I mean, a lot more interesting the more time you spend it's, here it's possible but but yeah. I've noticed that you get that question a lot how long are you staying for and mm, yeah. you want to have a good answer <laughs> yeah. well there's no point in lying if you're uh, yeah. well and maybe, maybe there is <laughs> maybe there is in the short time wow. but anyways Lloyd great to uh, have caught up with you yeah. after um, a two year hiatus I guess since we met in Lviv lovely Lviv and um, yeah I think that's a really good set of reasons and a personal experience to share about why you should consider moving here for maybe it's going to be a month maybe it's going to be three months maybe it's going to be forever but definitely uh, consider that and as I said I have down below some well, links for I you I was thinking you know one of my plans of coming here as well was to kind of um, I think it's a good place to, to ride out. Is that the right expression? Yep. I'm, I'm the English teacher. <laughs> um, kind of ride out the lockdown because I, I have a feeling that as we go, get to the summer, Europe is going to start to open up a bit more. I mean, who knows what's going to happen. But, yeah. but uh, if you spend a few months here, more relaxed atmosphere, and then, you know, you're still within reach of other places. But this is a good place to kind of hunker down, have a great time, and avoid all the bullshit in the rest of the world. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> better word. So I think that's the perfect note to end today's podcast. So we'll see you very soon in the next video. Dopabachina. That's Vidania. From Kiev. Free Kiev. Freedom. <laughs> Ukraine. Ciao, ciao. Ciao. Sar Experience.